Hey there, welcome back. In this video, we're solving a simple material balance problem for an absorber. Uh, just a brief recap, an absorber is used to absorb something from a gas stream and transfer it to a liquid stream. We usually use it as a form of pollution control, but it, it can also be used to recover valuable materials that are in a gas stream. Here's the problem. An absorber is used to remove acetone from a nitrogen carrier gas stream. The gas feed with an acetone mass fraction of 0 0.213 enters at a rate of 200 kg per hour. The absorbent is pure water entering at 1000 kg per hour. The exit gas stream contains 0.8 weight percent acetone and 2.9% water vapor. I'm assuming that this is also percents by weight. Letter A, determine the mass fraction of acetone in the exiting liquid stream. And letter B, we are also to determine the percent recovery of acetone. Now, our unit here is an absorption column or absorption tower, and the process is absorption. Let's draw the diagram. An absorption tower is usually shown this way, in which you have two inlet streams that are flowing counter current to each other. So the gas stream is usually introduced at the bottom of the tower and the entering liquid stream is usually introduced at the top of the tower. Now your gas stream will also exit at the top and your liquid stream will eventually exit at the bottom. Let us label the streams. I'm going to call this my G input or my gas inlet. And then this is my gas outlet. For the liquid, I'll use L. This is my liquid inlet and my liquid outlet. This is typically how you label an absorption tower or absorption column. Let's take a look at the given values. Our inlet gas stream has a mass flow rate of 200 kilograms per hour. And it has an acetone mass fraction of 0 0.213. I'm going to write that as W sub A for acetone. That's 0 0.213. The remainder of this, of course, is nitrogen. The mass fraction of nitrogen here is simply the balance of 0 0.213. There's my calculator. So it's 1 minus 0 0.213. That this is the mass fraction of nitrogen in the entering gas stream, 0 0.787. And we're done characterizing the inlet gas. Next, how about the inlet liquid? Your inlet liquid is pure water. So let me just take note here that this is 100% water with a mass flow rate of 1,000 kilograms per hour. And that's the only information that we need for the liquid inlet. The exit gas stream, that is our G out in our diagram here, contains 0.8 weight percent acetone. And 2.9% water vapor. That is uh, 2.9% percent by weight water vapor now by the process of uh, of analyzing our system right here your gas inlet consisted of acetone and nitrogen and then when it came out it still contains a little bit of acetone but considerably less than the the inlet concentration and it also contains water vapor so this means that your absorbent which is water some of it evaporated and the water here in the gas outlet is a vapor. Okay, so some of the absorbents evaporated. Now, the remainder of this, so if you go back to the calculator and subtract everything from 100, that's 100 minus 0.8, which is the weight percent of acetone, minus 2.9, which is the weight percent of water, the remaining 96.3% here is supposedly still nitrogen because our assumption is that nitrogen is not being absorbed by your absorbent, which is water. That is a very good assumption because uh, nitrogen gas has a very low solubility in water. Okay, 
So we now have a complete composition of the gas inlet and of the gas outlet. Your liquid inlet, we know that it's pure water. So we just need to determine the composition of your liquid outlet. And in fact, that is what is being asked in letter A. We are to determine the mass fraction of acetone in this liquid exit stream. To do that, we just have to perform the usual material balances. But to simplify our process, let us first predict what are the substances expected to be in the liquid outlet. Of course, there's still water that will exit in the liquid outlet, right? Because that is your uh, that water is your is your input in your liquid stream, and then there needs to be acetone in the liquid outlet as well because that's what you're trying to absorb. Notice that the concentration of acetone decreases from the gas inlet to the gas outlet, and that's because some of the acetone has transferred from the gas phase to the liquid phase. Okay, that's the function of the absorber. Now, as mentioned earlier, there is no nitrogen that will be absorbed. That is our assumption. So it's reasonable to say that our L out will only contain water and acetone. So it's a binary mixture. I'm going to let X to be the mass fraction of acetone. Sorry, not water. Let X be the mass fraction of acetone in L out. And of course, for water, that is simply 1 minus x. You can also do it the other way around such that water has a mass fraction of x and acetone has a mass fraction of 1 minus x. Okay, So that will just give you the same results. Now we can perform the material balances. Let's do the OMB. The OMB here, you have two inlets and two outlets. So you can write that as your gas inlet plus your liquid inlet. That's equal to the gas outlet and the liquid outlet. Notice that your uh, that the streams are given as mass flow rates. So we need to set a basis. For this entire problem, I'm going to say that my basis is one hour of operation. Such that I can already say that my liquid inlet is 1,000 kilograms because it's, it's for one hour, right? And my gas inlet is 200 kilograms. Substitute those values in your OMB. This will become 200 plus 1,000 equals G out plus L out. All of the uh, terms in this equation are in kilograms. Now, you see that we have two unknowns, right? We have G out and L out. Now, we have to figure out other equations in order to solve those unknowns. And we can do that using component balances. So first, you have to check, do you have a tie component? A tie component is a component that enters in one stream only and exits also in one stream only. So uh, if you take a look at our diagram here, acetone enters in G in and it exits both at G out and L out. So acetone is not a tie component. So you, you always want to start with the tie component because usually that would give you a lot of information. An example of a tie component here is nitrogen gas. Take a look at the diagram. Nitrogen gas only enters in G in and it exits only at G out. That's, a def that, that's definitely a tie component. So let's do the nitrogen balance. Doing that, we can write that as 0 0.787 times G in, that is 200 kilograms. That's your inlet nitrogen. Your outlet nitrogen is 0 0.963, that's the mass fraction of nitrogen, times G out. So you see, by doing the tie component balance, we are already able to solve for the value of G out coming from that balance alone. Go back to the calculator. Let's Enter this. How do you solve for G out? It's 0 0.787 times 200 divided by 0 0.963. My gas outlet is 163.45 kilograms. And since we already have the value of the gas outlet, you can go back to the overall material balance and see that only L out here remains as the, uh, as the variable. So using that equation, you can also solve for L out already. L out is simply 200 
plus 1,000 minus G out, 163.45. That's 1,036.55 kilograms. Now, before we proceed any further, let's first analyze what happened. Since we already know the values of G out and L out, it's always worth uh, taking a look at these values if they really make sense. For example, your entering liquid was 1,000 kilograms per hour. For a basis of one hour, that is 1,000 kilograms, right? We expected the liquid to become heavier at the outlet because it was absorbing all of that excess acetone. So, it entered at, uh, as 1,000 kilograms and at the outlet, your L out, the value is 1,036.55 kilograms, so it became heavier. The extra 36.55 kilograms was the acetone that was absorbed in the process. Okay, always perform those, those tiny consistency checks to make sure that our calculations are still making physical sense. Okay, now uh, we, are, we are already... Uh, we already know the values of G out and L out. So the next thing to do here is to determine the value of X. Remember earlier that we set the value of X as the mass fraction of acetone in the liquid stream. To get the value of X, we simply perform an acetone balance. For your acetone balance, we simply take a look at the entering acetone, that is, in the, in the G in stream, 0 0.213 times 200. And nothing else because there's no acetone entering here in L in, right? But you have two streams wherein acetone is getting out. So on the other side of the equation, this is 0 0.008. I'm in the G out stream times G out, 163.45 kilograms. Plus in the L out stream, we still do not know the value of X. So just write that down as X multiplied by the, by the mass of L out. 1036.55 and this acetone balance only has one unknown and that is x from here we can solve for the value of x let me calculate that so x here is 0.213 times 200 minus 0 0.008 times 163.45 divided by 1036.55. Mass fraction of acetone here is 0 0.0398. Or this is also e equivalent to 3.98% by weight of acetone in L out. Okay, it depends on you whether you want to express it in uh, percent by mass or mass fraction, but the problem here asks specifically for a mass fraction. Okay, that's it. That is our answer for letter A. The mass fraction of acetone in the exiting liquid stream. We have a follow-up question here for letter B. We are to determine the percent recovery of acetone. Let's analyze how to get percent recovery. Percent recovery is often used in, in different scenarios, in different instances, but its general meaning remains the same. It's a ratio wherein your numerator is the amount that you recovered or the amount that you were able to get from this process, and the denominator is the amount that was initially fed to the process. So using that definition, the amount that we were able to get, we are pertaining here, of course, to acetone because that's the one that we're, we're trying to absorb, right? The acetone that, we're, that we were able to recover is the one in L out. So I can write that as X times L out. This is the amount of acetone recovered. And the amount of acetone fed was the original amount of acetone in the G in stream or in the gas inlet stream. I can write that as 0 0.213 times G in. Again, your numerator was the amount of acetone that we were able to recover. And your denominator was the original amount of acetone fed to the process. Okay, let's substitute those values in the calculator here. 
x we just calculated was 0 0.0398 times L out. We calculated that as 1036.55 divided by 0 0.213 times G in, which is 200 kilograms. Take a look at the value. This is 0 0.9684. This is in terms of a fraction, but if you want it in percent recovery, you can simply multiply this by 1000. Sorry, not 1000, 100. So my percent recovery is 96.84%. It's not 100% recovery, and you can actually see in the diagram why it's not 100%, because there is still some sort of acetone going out of your gas stream. There's a little bit of acetone that escapes the absorption process. So our percent recovery is less than 100%. Now, uh, you can easily tell if the percent recovery is 100% if you check your gas outlet and there's no more acetone in here. We are then sure that the percent recovery is 100%. Okay, that's it for this problem. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them down in the comments below. Thank you for listening and I'll see you in the next one.